anyone else essentially yeah. <laughs> all right Manny this is I have to say this is incredible uh, it's not every day you get to talk to a living legend essentially in the world of college tennis <laughs> and I know you're a very humble guy so saying that it's it's very overwhelming the amount of accolades that you have and <laughs> Partly because uh, I guess we've been doing it for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. And I think for you too is, my first question to you is, how, just what do you, how, what's the word that you would describe this program that you've basically continued since uh, yeah. Dan? Well, I think, you know, one or two words would be, you know, family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just, you know, we almost, not every day, but you know, a lot of times, like yesterday, we had uh, you know Trey Carter mm. come by practice. He's in town. Um, he uh, he was part of our '85 and '87 national championship team. You know, and you know he's already been by several times this year. You know, Al Parker comes by, John Mangan. <laughs> uh, you know, so many guys. Um, you know, for the Tennessee match, we had a Letterman's tailgate. You know, our guys uh, love this place so much as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a player here, playing for Coach McGill, most of them now have <laughs> played for me. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a brotherhood uh, that, uh, you know, just lives on. And, uh, you know, that's, I think, uh, the most meaningful thing about uh, my job is just seeing our guys come back and and uh, appreciate now in many ways uh, some of the things that they didn't even realize were taking place, uh, you know, and how this place has impacted them and teachings from Coach McGill and, you know, the camaraderie and, and um, you know, the, our, our, our philosophies and, and, you know, I think more than anything, I'm, you know, I'm a second father to most of our, our kids that have come through this program and um, you know have helped just a little bit in molding them and you know they're all so successful now and uh, and they're just appreciative and i think for you too is the idea that you've taught so many different players you've taught in so many different ways what's the number one thing that you preach here at georgia or you preach when you coach just doing things right uh, just having a work ethic uh, that is consistent, uh, that is based on um, teamwork. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a huge part of, uh, of what our program is about, is you know, every, taking advantage of every minute of every practice, making the guy across the net from you that day a little bit better, challenging him, uh, competing, uh, and in the end, making each other better. Yeah. And for you too, you're now your son's coaching as well. And yeah. we had the pleasure of meeting him when he was coaching Alex, who is a recruit here, uh, not so long ago in uh, Rome when he was playing that challenger. Okay. What's one thing that you've taught him, or one thing that you teach your kids about the sport of tennis? I mean, it's. Uh it's life lessons, right? It's, it's how you handle um, um, adversity. It's how you handle the difficulties uh, out on the court. That's, that's the biggest lesson is because you're going to, life is not easy. Uh, after you leave here, you think, you know, hey, I don't have to study anymore. What a relief, you know, then you really go out in the real world and you have to compete and you have to be a good teammate and you have to be a good leader. So, you know, I, I expect our seniors, by the time they get to their fourth year, to be our captains. That's just the expectation. Uh, you know, your first year, you're just, you're just looking around, wondering where to go and yeah. how you do things. And 
um, you know, your your captains are going to be a big part of like um, how things uh, are done, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like if I can teach these guys how to do things on their own, and I do, um, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be able to be self sufficient. They're gonna be leaders. They're gonna be good teammates, good husbands, uh, and um, and good parents when the time comes. Um, that is, uh, you know, I think doing things right, mm -hmm. doing things right. And, you know, I believe in fair play and uh, and and being respectful of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those things, I think, come through, even though I don't really preach a whole lot. <laughs> I, um, I have very strong um, foundation uh, from Coach McGill, from my parents and th that I pass along and I think you know you have to you have to have a passion for what you do mm -hmm. if you want people to follow you mm -hmm. and I think that I I don't uh, you know I don't take this for granted I show up every day I look around out here and I look at this stadium and I look at these the setting of this place and it's pretty it's pretty special so we've talked about how you coach we've talked about the way you've coached but what's one thing your kids have taught you over the years of coaching? Well, you have to be patient. <laughs> uh, you have to be patient and uh, you have to believe in the kids that you have. It's very important for me to recruit good character kids. Mm -hmm. that, that's, where you, that's where it all starts. And kids that will fit in well with our philosophy, our culture, and I look for kids that can add to that, you know, from time to time uh, you see kids that, you know, are a little bit immature, but that's it. You have to be able to see past that as long as they're good kids, uh, they're going to mature if they have good leadership uh, and you, you know, you push them in the right direction and you challenge them and you, you reward them when they do good things, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you don't accept. Uh, things that are going to be detrimental to the team or to the kids themselves. I think that's important. So having having good um, um, how do I say this? Having a good direction, mm -hmm. having a good direction and 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 a good culture. We're not going to lower the bar for your difficulties. We're gonna expect you to overcome them. I think that's a big part of what we try to do. And I think for you too, we've seen the All-Americans that are on this wall. We've seen the guys that have gone pro with John Isner and now having players in the top 20 of doubles as well that you have personally coached. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you take away from the pro game that you've seen your guys that you've coached to the pros and what do you try to resonate with the guys that you have now? Well, hard work pays off and uh, having a dream having a goal making the most out of every minute like i said before is important um you know you don't know where this is going to lead you mm -hmm. uh, we've had we've had a lot of number one u.s juniors come along and you know some have had great careers some have made it into the top 100 but some you know life has has its own ideas sometimes um you know, whether it's, you know, you go through injuries, whether, you know, your goals change a little bit. You know, I've had kids that won NCAA titles that went out there and they just didn't like the lifestyle. And they just decided to make some changes. And now they are ultra successful in other endeavors. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing guaranteed, nothing owed to us. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I think a big, uh, you know, a big, lesson I try to teach our kids is is that you're gonna be okay it, it, it may be in tennis but it may be somewhere else and I think what they're learning through the sport of tennis is gonna help them down the road in whatever endeavor they decide to turn their attention to absolutely and I think my last question to you is um, I had a quote from Philip one of your leading seniors here and he said that to you that you have more experience that you forgot than these guys have right now. <laughs> I, I used that joke one time this year <laughs> when in a fun way I was challenged about. Uh, okay. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't my quote. I, 
I stole that from Coach McGill okay. one time as a player. I kind of just challenged him a little bit on, you know, on something he said. Okay. In a very respectful way. May Absolutely. I add. And he looked at me and said, well, I've forgotten more tennis than you'll ever know. <laughs> so I thought I used it one time earlier this spring. And it's like all of a sudden I've seen two or three of my players quote me <laughs> for saying that. So anyway, it's in, in jest, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's... it's um, it's great that they held on to that, and mm -hmm. uh, and you know it's just a, a moment in fun uh, because I know that I may be in the back nine, whether I'm on hole 16 or 12 <laughs> or 18. Uh, you know the curtain is going to come down sometime soon. Uh, I'm still having fun, and I have you oh, know yeah. no plans right now, but. You know, I've been around. This is my 41st year, and so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a while. No, I think I, from that, it's just what you say to these kids really resonates with them, whether it's a piece of advice, whether it's jokingly with that quote. Yeah. I mean, you've, you left an impact on this program bigger than I think you believe you have, even though you've been here for 41 years. No so, thanks. Manny, I really do appreciate you doing this, and hopefully we sure. can have a longer conversation about your career sometime soon. I'd love to. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.